Okay. Without further ado, we're super excited to have um, this this radio and the Tempe X That's and right. Tataba Australia representative Surian. So can we can That's we right. get him into the studio with us? All right, let me do my he's technical not, skills. He's not here in person, but thanks. Hi Surian, how are you, mate? I'm here. very well. Good to see you guys. Ah, uh, there he is. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us today. Must be a busy time for you and for Tarba Australia, I bet. This, it has um, been absolutely. Yeah. It has been a long time coming. It has. There's been a Indeed. lot of hype about it. Like yeah. I said, um, Surian and the team were kind enough to give us a, a pre-release one that we could do some some content and a bit of demos and stuff like that, yeah, which was really to, cool. We got to use it and check it out ergonomically. Check out its um its features. But guess what we got? What have we got? Have you lost it? Yeah. That's because I moved it. No. You, you right. better not lost it. We sent that specifically to get it for the weekend. Here we go. I have got my very own. Can you turn that up a bit? I can barely hear young Syrian. What's upside Could be... down, mate? What's upside bit, down? Bit your pop. <laughs> well, there's a picture up here. This one's got a picture. It's much nicer than the box that, um, that we had the other one in. So this is really cool. So... I'm going to do a bit of an unboxing, and hopefully young Surian can tell me exactly what I'm looking at here. This is a fresh one. Can I have a... I don't, now for I don't, for I don't everyone, else, like everyone else that's watching, if you have any questions for Surian about the new Futaba, please feel free to put them in the comments, and then I'll um, transfer them across, and um, we'll find out more about this fantastic new top-end radio. Da, 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 da. Look at this. We've got the instruction manual. Yep. Is that a screen protector in there, Surian? That is, yes. The Tempex, it comes with a screen protector just so you can protect that valuable uh, LCD screen. Cool. Um, the next thing that just showed there is your, oh, yeah. is your warranty card. Um, that show, so shows that it came from Futaba Australia, um, and that will cover all your warranty issues um, if you have anything that does go wrong. But if you need it repaired yep. as well, that can also be sent back too. Yeah, so it's really important to get your radios from a local um, supplier because the warranty is very, very important. If you're getting them from overseas, then you're going to have to send it back overseas to get it covered. Well, they are such a valuable item. You yes. really do want the, secu the security and the assurance of being able to get it fixed and having some, like, to get your warranty on it. Yeah. And if you buy one from overseas or one that's not from this country, um, then that won't be covered. So... And if anybody's ever seen me handle a radio or even try and get one out of a box. What are you doing there? Everything's falling. It's just all falling out. <laughs> Why did you pack that, Surya? Yeah, exhibit A. <laughs> did, you, booby trap. did you booby trap that for me, mate? <laughs> this, Excellent. Just, for, just for you, mate. Just for you. Yeah. This literally just got here like an hour ago. So this is all new to me. This is like this is like Christmas. So talk it me is. through what so I'm so looking this at. Is, Having gone through all the various versions before, this has possibly got the most amount of stuff in a box I've seen. So, um, yeah, just you know, can have a look at these are some just some of the accessories that come in the package. Oh, yeah, put it on. A bit tight on top, mate. What's this rubbery thing? So that is the little grip you can see just up here, just under the trigger section. Um, that is an optional one for it, so you can obviously make an uh, larger or smaller to suit your comfort. Well, hang on. I better get my new radio out of the box, eh? Hey? Oh, where's that go? Does that, does that go under under here? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, that goes just be between your, your trigger it? finger and your top knuckle, essentially, of your index. Oh. You can see oh, it's just there. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's oh, two. Yeah. Yep. So there's two grips on this radio. You've got a, you will get a spare one, uh, a smaller one in the package, and you'll get two different of these nose pieces as well. So yep. you can absolutely customize this radio to suit yourself and your comfort. Yeah. So these are all the goodies that we didn't get on the pre-production one. Well, exactly. So it's like absolute... I said, this is why it comes with the, the amount of stuff I've seen in this is amazing. Um, yeah. So there you've got a few, you can really so make sure have... you're absolutely comfortable um whether you've got you know very small delicate hands or as i like to i uh, you know i uh, like to call my down. friends meat paws the biggest hand you've ever seen but it's meat, meat paws. <laughs> yeah. it's better than what other people have called them but anyway 
What we've things. discovered is that a lot of the, uh, especially Australian market, um, drivers like to have a firmer spring in certain areas. Um, so we've actually had to customize and actually get other springs. So, so it is possible to change your springs in your steering and your throttle to make it firmer, along yep. with the adjustments that you actually get in your radio. So you've actually got your adjustments just like the version before, where you can tighten yep. or stiffen, sorry, uh, loosen or tighten the, the, the spring steering tension. response spring or the throttle spring. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so excited, I can barely get it open. All right, so what have we got here? This is another This is another grip that we're looking at. Yep. So you've got the smaller grip um, that comes separately. So if you, you know, if you want the bigger grip for, to have a larger feel in your hand, that's what comes yep. standard. If you want to make that a bit small for your hands, then you've got the small grip as an, uh, that comes in the box too. Beautiful, beautiful. And then what have we got here? We've got, oh, these are the blanking plugs that I read about in the yes. um, instructions that I downloaded on the other one Correct. I had. Correct, yeah. And that's so to go into the pedal who, switches and stuff. Yeah, for our guys who run off-road, they're really good just to stop uh, any chance of extra dirt or clay or something getting in there, possibly shorting or even just getting extra dirt and crap in the receiver. Just plugs it all up, seals it up nicely and tight. Yeah, and that's if you're not obviously not using the switches. You can take the switches out, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, so this like is the drop receiver. down wheel. So the blanking plugs go into your receiver here, so that's where they plug in. Um, oh, the receiver, receiver ports. Oh, oh, the receiver ports. So it's not They're for the, the receiver ports. So this is for the receiver ports. So I thought it was the blanking. I remember reading something about the blanking plugs or something for the pedal switches or. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the one. But these ones are the receiver blanking ports. Yeah. The, yeah, the receiver very cool. Ports. And here we've got the drop down wheel assembly. So, yes, you will notice there are two different drop-down assemblies. There is a small and a medium. Yep. Yep. yep, a small and a medium are included. So you can see they are a little one's a little bit longer than the other. Yep. So you can actually, again, drop the radio further down and then obviously angle it using the angle spacer. So that allows yep. you to actually change the, the angle of the wheel as it sits. Yep. Um, and then with the drop-down, again, you can rotate it uh, up and back depending where your comfort level is. Does this come with its own charger? It does. It comes with a beautiful life charger, which is uh, very handy, obviously. Yep. Um, That's a bit of a plus, isn't it? Just plug straight in, plug straight in the side at the back, yep. um, and makes it nice and easy to charge. And then it looks like we've got another wheel. It's got a spare wheel. Correct. Right? Yes. The goodies keep coming. So know, you right? get the standard small wheel, um, but in the packet there, you can see. There is an optional large wheel, depending again on what your comfort level is like. Whether you want a small or a large wheel, you get both yeah, options. And Stuck you will notice something cars. else on the foam. You might be able to yep. tell on one side of the foam it's softer compared to the other side. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? So what yes. happens is this foam is optional. You can switch it over again to you yep. find your preference. So whether you prefer the soft foam or the stiff foam, both wheels come with that on it. Oh, wow. It's just like in Moto GP, the asymmetric tires. Right. So you have a hard, hard compound on the left and a soft yep. compound on the right. Depends on which which way you're going. It's a bit like 12 scale racing on the front yeah. end. See? You can, feel the, you can feel the difference. Oh, you can. Oh, it's a huge difference. I can display it more on, on my old radio, actually. The one that's going to get shelved, I brought that in to talk about. Right. So, But we can you can see it because it's actually worn, badly okay. worn. That is so cool. That is such a good looking wheel too. And that's half the battle is having a good looking radio. For Absolutely. people like me who aren't talented enough to drive fast, it's really important to look good. What's Kelly got to do with it? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've been telling myself that for years. Yeah. <laughs> so what's a chunky thing here? All right. So what Brett's got in his hand there, this is a little adapter. Now, yep. your nice new 10PX comes with an 1100 milliamp life pack. Now, if we just open this up, you can see it in the bottom. There's an 1100 light pack in the bottom. Now, the 1100 is a fairly light pack. It's designed, uh, well, it was changed to that during the 7PX uh, production run because drivers felt they wanted a slightly lighter radio. Originally, it came with one of the 1700 packs that's here. Yeah, but they changed to an 1100. It's a slightly shorter. Uh, lifespan, but what the drivers felt is they preferred a lighter radio in their hands. So lighter radio, easier to hold over the course of a run. 
The next step is Fataba have introduced a new battery that comes standard in the 16iZ. Yes. Now, this is the battery here. A, nice, a really, really neat little feature is it's actually got a little USB-C charge port. You can just see it there. Now, so this and that's inbuilt in the battery. That is inbuilt in the battery. So oh. these batteries are currently oh. on order. We hope to see them very shortly. But yep. what this option allows you to do is if you look here at the insert, yep. this actually drops straight into there. Like so. What, yep. And what this insert allows you to do is with your nice new radio is to run a battery here that actually sit is charged via USB. Yep. It's a little bit heavier, but it gives you a little bit more runtime. So you can see that insert sits in there really nice and snug. Oh, wow. And saves it rattling and when about. You put on, yeah. And when you put the new base cover back on, yeah. you can actually, oops, if I line that up a bit better, you can actually see oh, there, you go. there is a little insert you can see just pops open there and you can see yep. the USB socket. A little so window. that means what? for the little future, you can just Hello. use a USB-C <laughs> cable to charge your radio. Right. So that's really nice from Fataba. They're actually giving you an option straight away if you want to run a bigger, heavier pack without having to do too much to it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll touch on that later because I've actually got another option for that. So can I go ahead now, Serena, and can I plug this bad boy in? You can, absolutely. Now, you might notice there is a second plug in there. Um, yes. It's, a, it's blanked off currently. That will be uh, most likely for, as with the current 7PXR, uh, a wireless charger. Um, the current Ooh. life charger does not, the current base doesn't fit on this one yet. So I expect to see a new uh, base unit very, very soon. Right. Wireless charging, that's a bit special, isn't it? Yeah, so you just put it on the base. Yep. Here we go. Well, there you go. So together. Let's move that aside here so it's a bit cleaner to look at. Do, do, do you want to do, do the big peel back, mate? Do you, want to do, do you want to do the big peel back? What am I peeling to? Yes. Hey? Right? Oh, you want me to peel Go on. It? Get that. Oh, God. Just, do, just do, peel do, it. Just do, do, do you do, want it to go slow? Just be gentle. Don't be, oh! You're so mean. Yeah, Magic! <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have a go now. <laughs> that felt really good. Some people really get off on that, don't they? Oh, look, there's a second one. Oh, there is two. I was going to leave that on there for the happy customer, but the happy customer's got his radio. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'll turn it on. Oh. It's all very. Now, people might have seen me play with one of these. Like I said, I did have a pre production model. Yeah. So we have run through the basic parameters. Um, and I did actually have it um, on a couple of cars. I had it on our Hearns Racing Frog. Yeah. Uh, YZ2 and a YZ4. Yep. Um, and uh, the, the radio actually got rave reviews. So people were, were really happy with it. Yep. It was really easy to set up. Yes. Um, and coming from other Futaba radios that I've had, mm -hmm. it's all very similar and it's all evolution. Yep. So what Surian's going to do now is tell us about some of the special and unique features. Okay, so I'm going to swap this over to... Make Surian the star. Yeah, that's it. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. Shine, Surian, shine. Oh, oh, he's really small now, but we'll do this. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. Look, you made me dizzy, Beach. <laughs> Did I? Sorry. <laughs> so I'll give you that that's the so. yeah. The Tempex is the new flagship from Fataba. Um, really, is an absolute evolution of the Seven PXR platform. Um, really nice radio, more channels, more programmability. Uh, one of the great things is the menus. Now, most people who have played with the Fatal Radio before love the menus. Really easy to navigate, um, and they're very clean. The 10 px they have gone further on this. So previously, uh, the 10 pxr there were five different menu screens to log through. Now there's just two. The menus have been streamlined. It's cleaner. It's even easier to use. Um, and the graphics are even nicer as well. So you can see there the graphics menu, really nice, yeah. really smooth. Yeah. The Tempex uh, is, it would introduce a new protocol. So the F4G. The F4G? I'm just going to adjust that for you. 
Uh, sorry, one sec, guys. Uh, okay. That back, would happen. That would happen. Wouldn't it? There we go. That's all good. There we go. What's happened? So, sorry. You, you, you said before, you said to me before that this has got 10 channels. Yes, it does. But it's only got a four channel receiver, I can see. It does. So, this is the way we fix that. Through. Yes, you can see there, the new receivers are even smaller than before. Here is the previous generation um, receivers. So this is the 334 SBE. This is the new one. It's even smaller. Um, but again, yeah, as you're right, it's got four ch channels there with an SBUS port. Now, SBUS technology is really, really awesome. What it allows you to do is you can actually program the servos. So you can actually set these servos through extra channels to allow you more functions, more features um, to do more things. Now, with the 7PXR, you could connect to one of the six channel air receivers if you wanted to just run uh, six analog ports. But yep. if you want to run SBUS, you can run up to 10 channels with the 10PX. Um, the way to do that is with one of these little babies. This is an SBUS hub. Exactly. It allows you to connect. So this one hub allows you to connect an extra three servos for channels. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you plug one SBUS hub in, you will have four main channels from analog plus three of the SBUS. Yep. Um, if you want to run more, then you can add another hub. You can go up to obviously six channels through the SBUS hub. What I'll just show you here is I've actually changed the main menu on this radio here. So you can mm -hmm. actually see here, it's got the first four channels normal, which is obviously your steering, your throttle, and then various ancillaries. But what I've yep. just done quickly is I have got two of the Futaba SU400 SBUS servers. These are quite a nice little basic servo. They work really well. But even the base model Futaba servos are SBUS, SBUS programmable. Really? So you have a receiver. Oh. Wow. I didn't know that. I yeah. thought you had to spend, like, big money to get that. No, even the base model for Tarba SU300, which is ballparking around 20 to 30 bucks, is SBOS right, okay. programmable. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. So I've got one of those receivers here. Yep. yep. We're just going to plug in the SBUS hub. So you can see there's nothing plugged into channel one, two, three, or four. There's just the mm -hmm. SBUS yep. hub. What we're going to do now is we're just going to connect these servos in. Now, the beauty of an SBUS hub is it doesn't really matter which which one I've plugged into here. It doesn't matter. I can plug it into any one of these three. Because I've set the channel already on the servo, it will recognize mm -hmm. it whether I connect another two or three hubs on and then plug it in there, or I plug it into this one here. So I can plug it in there or there, whichever. It does oh, not the matter. The servo itself has its own ID. Yeah. Correct. Right. So they are plugged in. You can see they are slightly apart on that one for you. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we'll plug in a receiver pack. So it doesn't really matter which one I can plug it into, obviously. So that is now plugged into here. So with our transmitter on, we will got the receiver needs to be connected. So we will go on. That is now turned into a green light, which means that the receiver has connected. Now we can just use your normal, your steering throttle. You can see the channel moving on the radio. Mm -hmm. And what we have done as well is you can actually see here, you can see channel five and six, which is what I've assigned these two servos to. You can yep. see a blue line. That means obviously it is set at a certain setting right now. So for one channel, I've just connected to here. Yep. So you can see that is a, wow. a monitor switch. So if I push so it all is, the way down. You have it expanded it to six channels. Wow. So, Yep, so currently I have set up channel five and six. I can plug another one in if I assign another channel just to yep. add more. So we can have as many, up to 10 channels total. Um, so for guys who run crawlers or drifters yep. or who want to run these extra channels, I mean, we have guys um, who race on and who add an extra surf for a DRS wing. And just, you know, just for fun. You can add these sorts of things. You can do all these sorts of projects. Um, and with SBUS, I'm going to add an extra channel to mine to stop crashing. The, the, the so exactly fresh, whether you want to do bash or whatever fresh channel so you've got here so that was one um this is another one you can actually see here yep so oh, that's, that's actually button. the dial so the dial is actually a two 
a, a double switch. So you can actually twist it. Yeah. And you can actually see there, I'm turning it because I've assigned that to that. Yep. You can actually see the servo here is turning as I turn the dial. Yep. Or I can push it. Okay. And it will go. So obviously you can set these to alternating or single position. So you click it once, it goes to that to an end point. Click it and it comes back. Or you can click it once and it goes under the click. It can go there and then remo yep. release it and it comes back. And of course, so I mean, the radio is then is going to have all options where you can mix them all into each other as well. Absolutely, yeah. So the once mixing channels. Like, no, yeah, well, mixing well, channels are like amazing for these so much software. You can make you can it use. Something. Oh, really? That, that fine, fine yeah. night mixing? Or when you have break on, you can have the DRS or whatever. So what happens yeah. if you don't want to use a servo? Just say you want to set up lighting. So what the tub I have is called a CPS kit. So this is the channel position switch. Right. This is actually, this turns a, a signal, which is obviously a uh, using the position. So the plus, hun plus 100 or minus 100 position. And that yep. turns it to an on and off. So you can actually turn and actually include two little LEDs in here. So mm -hmm. as that you go to that positive and minus 100, it can actually turn the kit on and off. So that's really, really handy. I imagine that drift guys would have heaps of those on their cars, no, for all the different lights. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he would know, wouldn't he? Have you got your so drift this, car yeah, there wired up, Surin? Sorry, what was that? Have you got your drift car there wired up or not yet? Um, I was a bit lazy <laughs> with this one. Um, so we haven't quite put a light kit into this one yet. Um, yeah. This one here has uh, the SBUS program, uh, programmability because we. I'm going to show off another little uh, cool little project, which is Fataba have also produced, obviously, through the SBUS features. Um, yeah, this one's in partnership with AccuVance, which is the MC970 CR ESC. So this is a, this is a drift ESC. But what the SBUS function allows you to do is it allows you to change your settings on the fly without having to program anything in. Oh, well, when you plug your speed controller yeah. into the SBUS port, it actually connects uh, the programming ability, which means you can adjust it from the radio, no issue. And that's the same thing with the new GYD 550 gyro. So again, SBUS programmability, settings can be adjusted on the fly. You do not have to go and pick the car up or play around. So you can just plug it. You can just go to the various menus here and tune it from your radio. Also, I'll show you this here. That's one of my current cars, um, Yokomo YD2 based. Um, so you That's can see here. We love Yokomo. It's a nice car. You can see here. You can see here the new receiver. Um, there is an S bus hub just tucked just underneath here, just to keep everything. So the ESC has a cable that goes into the S bus hub. The yep. 550 gyro also has a cable that goes into the hub. So both can be adjusted on the fly. So wow. if we connect this up. That makes it a lot more streamlined, doesn't it? It really does. So, so basically you've got, um, they're both plugged into the S bus so they can communicate via S bus back to the transmitter. Yeah. So it's just like next level telemetry. Yep. So right now, this car has just connected up. So another really cool feature is obviously the Tempex has model types. So you can actually set um, the model type. You can actually see just on that screen there, it allows you to set and show on the screen certain features depending on what vehicle you have. So yep. as I'm running a drift car, I've set it to a drift setting. And I what that means on, is on the main screen, you can actually see it's automatically got a gyro game showing on the screen. Oh, there is a drift setting. And what happens is if you change that setting, you will see the main settings on the screen will change to suit that model. Right. Okay. Wow. So that is a really, is really cool feature that it's makes it really yeah. easy to set your vehicle up and see things that are very important to you. Okay. Wow, very clever. And they make it as easy as that. That is it. It makes it nice and easy to see these settings, the important things to you. So obviously with drifters, with rear-wheel drive, we run gyros. So you can see your gyro adjustment, and you can obviously see that going up and down as I play with the dial here. Now, we're, we're talking about S-Buds. 
So if you look here in the main menus, you can see there is an accessory menu. If we go into that, you'll see all these features and functions down here. So which one am I looking at? So if you go into the accessory menu, and if we look at the different settings we have there, let's say we can go into the, let's look at the uh, ESC. So we'll go into the MC, the MC link function. Yep. You can see that it allows you to pick which, which ESC you're running. Yep. So for us, we're going to pick the MC970. We're now going to read it. Yep. And we are reading it through a wireless ES, wireless setting. Yep. So that has now gone through. Now that it is connected, you can actually go through the data listing. So if you can actually see, see there, you can actually start going through the, the menu. So, if, so for functions like Hobby Wing and some of the other and other ESCs, you obviously have a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi program card. Yep. yep. This means you do not have to even touch the card. You literally push a button and you can start cycling through all your menus or your ESC yep. functions. So as we go through, you can check it, adjust it to suit your liking. I can see why that's going to be banned for racing applications. Yes, unfortunately, that does mean it is. This ESC is not compatible uh, for sanctioned racing because of that. Yep. With drifting, it's a different matter. ESCs aren't yep. sanctioned or under certain uh, regulations. Now, that is fantastic. That it's really handy. If we look go through that accessory menu again, you can see we had a gyro link underneath the MC link. Yep. If you go into the gyro link, again, we go through the SBUS function because that's how the GYD 550 is connected. Yep. And it will link up in a second. And straight away, you can see the gyro menus have changed. So if you go into the basic settings, this is when you first set up a seven, so the 550 gyro, you will set these uh -huh. settings up. And you can actually go back. And then you can go to the more advanced gyro settings through here. Yep. Again, all this can be done on the fly. So you literally can have your car sitting over in the pit area or sitting yep. next on the side of the track. You're not quite happy with something, adjust setting, press right. It will send the settings to the gyro or the ESC for update. And then you can keep on driving with the new settings. That is so, so cool. It's quite amazing with the technology, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that, that's quite a um advancement and for somebody like somebody like me and and what i'm going to do with it which is just to channel um you know buggy and on-road racing and stuff it's really really not going to be utilizing much of the cool functions that it can do yeah you know um so what else have i got in what else have we got in the box here i can see some other goodies so i've got not just one receiver but we've got two yeah and they're both the 404 SBS. Correct. So that's that's the new protocol. This is the new F4 G protocol receiver. Um, yep. They are, as you can see, they are a fair bit smaller than the previous generation of receivers. Um, so I'll just demonstrate here. That is a Fataba 334 SBS. Yep. And you can see the size difference between them there. That is quite yep. a size of a difference of a footprint. And it means it can fit even easier on your chassis. Yep. So apart from the size difference, is there any other difference with the new protocol? So the F4G protocol gives you a faster transmission, especially with telemetry. So it means you can get that data even sooner uh, and really keep a good monitoring on what's happening. With right. SBUS, um, that you have that functionality of a bunch of different uh, telemetry. Yeah. Uh, uh, a bunch of different telemetry. You got you know your voltage, your amps, your amp draw. Yep. Um, some of the, the boat guys, they use the GPS ones. There is so much um, available to you. Um, and you can, supply, you can supply all those through Fataba Australia? Absolutely, yeah. We try to stock every single one on the shelf. So if they are required, you can give you guys a call um, and we can get them sent out if you don't have them on hand. But, you know, for you guys, as we saw with the radio, we can try and get an express bag as quick as possible. Absolutely. So with, with the two um, types of receivers, so we've got the... 
Uh, these are both the oh, same. Oh, they're both the same. Okay. So but both, our, yeah. our pre-production one, that, that had an SBS-E in it as well. So that was the antennaless model. Yes. Correct. So what happens is that for most people as standard want an antenna for racing. If you go, you know, if you're running Nitro, you always want an antenna. Yep. The SBS-E is the antennaless receiver designed for electric vehicles. Um, right. It's speci more specifically for like racing electric vehicles where obviously you're not, you're not, you're not looking at a 300 meter odd range. Mm -hmm. um, you're only looking at maybe a couple hundred meters, you know, one, you know, 200 meters. Um, and the idea obviously is no external antenna or minimal external antenna. Uh, yep. There's less chance of it being damaged and there's less, you don't have to run a big dirty antenna tube anymore either. Yeah. So if you no, look at here, again, the previous generation versus the new generation, there is a fairly sizable size difference. Yeah. Um, and that, that said, it is fully backwards compatible, isn't it? The transmitter is compatible with TFHSS, SFHSS, and FHSS, along with the F4G protocol. Yep. Um, it is no longer compatible with the FAST protocol uh, because FAST, unfortunately, it was last used in the 4P KSR, which is quite an old transmitter now. That's, I think it's about yeah. nine, nine to 10 years old now. So that pro yeah. that uh, capability is no longer there. The receivers are only only used with the 10PX because of the brand new F4G protocol. Yes. Now, I've had a question before with, um, when we showed off the radios when we first received them, uh, we had uh, someone asking about what would be the best selection for receiver for drag racing or speed runs because I think they've got the issue of quite a distance from start to finish. So yeah. would you be going with the, um, okay, with the, the antenna, antenna one for one? safety? And then there was also the question of whether or not you use an aircraft receiver. Is an aircraft receiver something that would be usable on something like this or any advantage? Yeah. You probably not bother with it um, yeah. now, especially fast protocol is a it is a different like so with TFHSS there is an air protocol and a surface protocol, so right. generally the air protocol will not work with a surface transmitter. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. So there the was one exception one. to that, which is this receiver here, which is the two one hundred six GF. That right. will work with surface or air because it's a fairly standard one. But yep. in relation to the majority of air receivers, they will yep. not work with a surface transmitter. Yeah. Now, so if the, you're going to do something where you're worried about yeah. your uh, your range, absolutely run a run an a large antenna receiver. Um, we had a drag meet in Perth a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, there was a there was a power box uh, fairly close to where we were running, and so some guys were running out of range after about a hundred meters, they actually were losing connection to their car. Wow. Um, almost all of them were running a basic, I think it was main, I think it was one of the guys had an M17. He was using the antennaless receiver. Yeah. Um, he was starting to have transmission issues by the end of the run. He had to go run down to come back into range, to pick the car up and come back. So that is something. Well, if it, was a, if it was a Sandmar, I'm not surprised. It's getting washed out. <laughs> but what was happening is obviously the environment was causing an issue where the signal was caught, being caused to drop. Yep. Um, so guys were actually having to go out, get close to the car, yep. turn around, and come back. So especially if you're concerned about range, absolutely run the wide receiver, um, whether yep. it's the older three three four or yep. the new four zero four. But for even most then, people, the antenna is not really that long, is it? It's really not a long antenna. Um, that's yeah. it, end to end. Um, obviously, it's not that long, but it's just to give you that extra security. If you're worried yeah. about the, if you're worried about the range of running out of range, that's why it's there. Right. Okay. So just a reminder to all the viewers that uh, if you have any questions for Surin or anything about the Futaba uh, radios, please send up your um, your questions, and we'll get those answered for you. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and then whatever, what else have I got in the box? There's something else I noticed here. Surian? What's that? So is it another trigger? Uh, so what happens in here, you can see the little packet that comes here. There, you will notice there is a different trigger in there. There is also a different wheel depending on that and obviously some bolts for your adapters. Yep. Um, again, this is a comfort thing. 
it depends whether that trigger is comfortable for you in the position or you want it to be um, you want it to be adjustable. So you can actually see that how your tr finger fits in that trigger hole is yep. is completely adjustable. So there is, uh, I believe that is the longer trigger in the bag. Yep. Uh, but Fataba also offer an option with smaller triggers. So, yep. you know, if you've got smaller, delicate hands, I could probably say that myself, or you have a larger hand, then we will find triggers to suit you. So obviously the medium trigger on there, large trigger in the bag, and Fataba also offer the aluminium smaller versions so they can be tighter on your finger as well wow aluminium, wow, aluminium. that gets me excited yes pick up my ears we, we need to offer a trigger fitting service well you want to measure fingers that's right <laughs> yeah. all right I'll, I'll watch the first one and see what happens it, it really is such a yeah but it's such a personal thing your radio isn't well, it, it is well that's, and that's it's it. usually ingrained from years of just habits yes um, and you know, it depends on, on what you probably had something that was cheaper when you started and wasn't adjustable. Yep. And that's exactly what you're comfortable with. Whereas if you start a life with a drop down or, or whatever, I've yep. never been a huge fan of drop down, but everybody's completely different yep. and it doesn't make you faster or slower, you know? Um, but yeah, so they are, and obviously there's a left to right wheel conversion. Yeah. If you're, Correct. if you're left handed. Um, yeah, so it is like, like Syrian saying, not only is it electronically adjustable, but the ergonomics of it mechanically is yeah. fully adjustable as well. And every I button, mean, if you take electronic. racing, for instance, nitro mains, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, if you're going to be driving, holding a radio for that long, it has to be comfortable in your hand. There's not, there's yeah. nothing worse than driving and feeling cramped up and tight. You've got to yeah. have the radio that adjusts to a comfort level for you. So you don't notice it, you know, you can tell it's a good radio if you don't notice it in your hands while you're driving yeah. yeah well i mean at that top level i mean it is basically a sporting um tool isn't it so you, exactly. you want all that adjustment to to be you know anatomically correct to yourself and i'm not it's saying that these, that these are expensive because i actually don't consider these expensive at all i think radios now and what they're capable of yeah are actually far better value than they were even 10 years ago yes Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? The features now and the programmability, the adjustability of the yeah. transmitters now on the market is unbelievable compared to even you know, seven to 10 years ago, you would not get even close to the functionality that you do now. So I'm going to show you actually what, what my new radio is going to replace. So here in my bag. Hey, Surian, do we have any hard cases available? Now, we've got the 7PX cases. The 10PX cases haven't arrived as of yet. Yep. Um, I'm hoping they're not too far away, but they will actually fit in a 7PX case. We did check this because, you know, I have one too. Um, yeah. They will fit in there so you can protect them there too. Um, speaking of cases, though, I've got a little sneak peek for you guys for something that is probably a bit close to my heart because... Um, mm. It is going to be quite a little sneaky over here. Um, oh. This is a brand new bag from Fataba. Um, I didn't know Fataba made bags. Mm. Oh, they do. They do. Let, let me show you. Um, oh. This is a new carry case from Fataba with a beautiful strap up there. But what's really handy mm. is that down here, there is a section for your radio to sit in. Wow. Shut That's up and so take my little... money. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've, I've seen that already. Not only do you have the section for two cars or your car and tools, but you've actually got a radio protected section that actually has a hard insert here. So it is well protected. Everything is solid all the way around. No, it makes that sense. is fantastic. Because once you do spend good money on a radio, it's imperative that you do take care of it. Now, they are Absolutely. quality and they do last, but it's not something that you want to be dropping, falling off your table, that sort of thing. So it's really good that you've got a home for it as soon as you come off the driver's stand um, and then it's, you take it out just before you go on the driver's stand and then also when it's in transport to and from the track. It's not something that you just want rattling around in your toolbox or in the, the footwell of your car. I mean, you're if, especially for something like a 10PX, you are investing a fair amount of money in it. 
you can spend a little bit more and invest in some good protection for it. Um, you know, because yeah. the last thing you want to do is have something go wrong with your highly sought after new product. That's right. So this is what I'm replacing it with. So this is my uh, evergreen, I'll call it, like for a Futaba. I'm a Futaba boy. This is my uh, 4PX. And this would be, it have to be 10 years old, wouldn't it? Sorry? Uh, 20, I think it's 2014, 2015. So ab about eight years old now from memory. Yep. Well, and um, and that's, yeah. but that's, how long I've, that's how long I've had this one for. Um, so, and it has been reliable mm. from the get go. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is nothing. I haven't had to do anything. I haven't smashed it. Um, that said, I've always kept it. I've got a hard case for it. You can see the family resemblance, can't you? Yeah. It is really good. And you can see here, that has got the dual compound. You can see here how the wheels, the, the foam's like gone a bit worn and stuff like that. So you do have a lot of the similar menus, but obviously, like I said, it is familiar, but they've just taken that evolution a lot further. Now, one thing that did happen to me like three years ago was the factory battery in this, and I think mm -hmm. it was a Life as well, a Life 1700 that came in this, mm -hmm. um, did actually just give up the ghost. Well, I guess batteries will do that. So luckily, I mean, and, and we're an agent and, and retailer of, of Aromax batteries, so they do a 2400 Life Pack. And that gives that that not not only did that give me, I actually liked it. It had a little bit additional weight, mm -hmm. but it also gave it phenomenal runtime. I mean, I'm the kind of person that takes it um, that charges before every race day anyway. Yeah. But it wouldn't even drop down like to. It wouldn't even drop below 6.5 volts. Right. You know, which is really really high. I don't like my voltages to go down below six volts. Um, but yeah, so they Aromax also offer a life pack of 2400. Um, and I'll be really keen to try it in this when I get more into it, whether it does in fact make the radio feel, it will definitely make it feel different because of the weight. Yeah. You can see here the weight. Well, I think this is all part of the tunability that Sorian was talking about before. Yeah. So Absolutely. Um, the, the battery that you put in your pack, you know, obviously it changes the runtime of the radio, but yep. the weight is such a thing. Uh, again, it's the ergonomics. What feels yeah, comfortable no. for you, whether you like a heavy radio or a lighter radio, that's yep. purely up to you what you want to do with it. That's right. Um, but, yeah, so saying that, then that's all in, in eight years or, or whatever that I've had this radio that I've ever actually had to change. It's never let me down. Um, and I'll be able to use all the receivers that I've got with this, yes. which are all the, the 314s and 334s. Yep. I'll yep. be able to use that with my new radio, yep. which is really Absolutely. good because over the years you sort of collect a few and, and probably Surian, like much more myself, has got more than one, what one or two RC cars. Yeah. I, I'm actually on my seven PXR. I think I was nearing thirty plus models at last count. Uh, <laughs> so I've got to be a bit careful now. <laughs> yeah. But again, you'll have to get, a, you'll have to get an SD card for it. Yeah, that's the thing. With an SD card, uh, the SD card port in the side, so sorry, in yeah. the front now, um, that does your updating but it allows you to add more models so if you is it behind the antenna oh, yeah okay. so that's the swivel antenna but behind the antenna oh. you can actually see as it opens up there's your sd card port for software updates yep now on the right is a new port that is a usb c port it actually yep. opens another function of this radio oh. over covid we saw a lot of people being stuck at home um you know restrictions everywhere so what a lot of people were doing is playing online uh doing online rc essentially yep uh so what it meant is so you know you, you're trying to connect your your control up to the computer so you can practice games and just keep on top of your rc game mm -hmm. the usb c port now lets you use this so you literally plug a usb c into here into your computer yep. and you can use yep. this as your controller now oh wow really yes wow. so that's that's okay. a really cool new feature previously you had to Daisy chain through a receiver, which was then plugged into an adapter, then into yep. computer. Now you yep. just go straight with the USB C cable. Straight into a USB port. Yep. Let's do it. So, wow. Yeah. Yep. Very, this. very, very handy. I'm um, scared to wear it out. <laughs> Honestly, I'm the kind of person I'd be scared to wear it out. You know, and it's funny because I know that they they really don't wear at a great rate. Like you've got to do that much work with these radios. Yeah. Unless you're racing fifth scale 
or nitro where you're constantly doing hour runs. Yeah. You are not going to, like I said, even in eight years yep. of considerable use, wear it out to a yep. point where yeah. it's it's failing or it's at all, any way noticeable. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So that was really cool. I mean, my seven, my my when I had a four PX, I had um, I was doing racing multiple times a week, uh, drifting, and the thing with with drifting is that a battery for us will last half an hour to forty five minutes. Because yep, we're not uh -huh. under as much load. So you can yep. easily drift four to five hours in a night yep. and your radio runs the whole time. Yep. So it's very easy to do that. So you think about the wear that goes onto these radios and they have they are they run pretty much faultlessly. They've been fantastic. Yep. Um, my four PX when I finally decided to go up to a seven, um, I, I essentially sold my four PX to a good friend. Yep. It still ran faultlessly. So they have been fantastic for quality over a really long time yeah yeah and that's and that's great and it's really good buying like i said buying locally mm. because you've got the whole factory support you know yeah um absolutely. so and if we can't get it fixed here in australia then the boys at fataba australia will organize to to get it fixed yeah overseas yes. you know what i mean so it's really nice to have that security definitely but the only way i can see that this this ever failing or, or breaking or whatever is by me physically smashing it off the bench or something you know, you i know, won't that, talk I... about you driving then no 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 don't talk about me driving all right <laughs> well i think we've i think we've really covered the the brand new tempe x well yeah um so. you know we were really we're really appreciative of Futaba australia uh, bestowing us with the pre-production model yeah very lucky to have so we we're very lucky to have it and i know surin was a big part of that letting us have it um get some content up and get familiar with it yeah so we're really looking forward to this will be on the shelf um well it'll be in it, it'll be in the store if not today monday it'll be on in store online and available yep. so really good this one here did come because this was expressed out in an airbag yeah. to make it for today's show because yep. they literally just landed in Australia yep. what a day or two ago. Lucky to be forty eight hours. Correct. So yeah. so they, they came in. Um, we knew you guys had a live show for Friday, so we wanted to get that one out to you to make sure you had it on hand. Fantastic, mate. Well, thanks for looking after us, Surin. Um, yeah, thanks for taking the time today. Um, and yeah, it's really good that that um, Hearns Hobbies in Futaba, Australia have got such a good relationship. Yeah, for sure. And we definitely learned a lot of things, didn't we? Oh, today, I'm really yeah. glad that Surin came on because, like I said, I really haven't explored, even in the couple of weeks I had it, I yeah. just don't have the the scope that Surin's got. That's yeah. why we asked him to come on That's because it. I know that with the drifting and with his experience with Futaba alone, he's yeah. got a lot more in-depth knowledge than, than I'll have in another five years. Yeah, for sure. So thank you for joining us today, Surin. Thank you for having me, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Um, good to chat. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions, you can shoot them through. Um, yep. I'll, we can always get a reply back to you through the guys at hands as well. Yeah. Sure. Fantastic. Been great. No worries. Thanks for coming on, mate. No worries, guys. Take care. Take care. Thanks. See you. Wow. Wow. Holy moly. My head's just exploded. I have learned more about Futaba, the 10 px in the last 20 minutes or however long that Serene was on than, yep. I, than I've known about Futaba in the last five years. Well, it, it makes a big difference when you have um, an expert go through all the features because at the end of the day, when you look at it, from this one to the previous seven, it looks more like an evolution. It's a bit hard to tell what the differences are except for the obvious extra well, channels. The protocol yeah. and the USB. But with all the others, and... that's right. That that is amazing. I mean, there's there's a hidden, you know, like that USB C yeah. behind the uh the swiveling antenna. Yep. With the SD port, the which, is, features. which is expandable. Yep. And I'm really glad that he showed us because a lot yep. of people say, Oh, it's a four channel receiver, it doesn't even do ten channels. Well, Surian's put that myth to bed and shown how you can extend it through the S-Bus port. That's right. And then tune wirelessly. Yep. Your servos, your gyros, and your ENCs. Yep. That's phenomenal. Amazing. I'll be, um, yeah, I'll be going through the websites and getting some telemetry stuff yep. and seeing how that goes. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm really, really excited. Good.